Um, this is a magnetite and copper and some gold in there, quartz crystals. And um, what else is in here? All kinds of stuff. Oh, uh, neodymium magnets in here. So I, I actually started making videos about charging water before I started talking about flat earth. That's what you're talking about. Flat earth. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna have to get you to just do a whole session on that, especially the whole thing about programming the water and all of that. And I just wanna let everybody right. know that I am back with my brother, Subtle Infinity, and we about to blow y'all away. And I'm just gonna let the brother pick up where we left off. We was talking about the dome and infinite plane. We're gonna go into Antarctica and the blood types. I started questioning when, once I started, so I, I became aware of the Dr. Masaru Emoto experience or experiments like five years ago. So that kind of helped set in for my um, spiritual interpretation of the material realm. So I started to see, I never let go of, you know, that observation of reality and realizing that there's no, as we see separated people, us separated from each other, like we're still connected by air, we're still connected by all these things, basically water. The gaseous state of water is the air, and then you have the liquid, which is the water that is in your body. Then you have the soul, which is the ethers, which is encompassing the entire experience as a whole. So when the flat earth came around, which was right after I started, or sometime after I was uh, researching the, the experience, experiments like that, I wanted to understand how, you know, make, make deeper and make a deeper understanding of the as above, as above, so belowness of our representation and relationship to the earth plane as a whole. So if we are existing as water and the material realm and breathing air, then the earth must also be a representation of that in some kind of way. We have the solid, we have the liquid, we have the soul or the, the gaseous stat, state. And I recently have been confirming that in reference to the physical body, the liquid mind, uh, or the higher mind, not your just like a conscious mind, but your conscious and your subconscious and unconscious mind, your higher mind as a whole, as it all fits together, and the soul essence of who and what you are, the ethers. So that goes into, if that all exists on that level, then there must be some kind of relationship that the earth plane itself is expressing on that same kind of manner. Mm -hmm. So when I went into... Which is why when I saw the, uh, the the dome stuff and the infinite plane stuff, I I largely gravitated to this being an infinite experience, not subjected to any kind of one thing. But like I said, I don't have any proof or anything like that. It's just uh -huh. what I was seeing. And actually, I did a video. I don't remember which one it was, how far back it was. But I shared an, an image from a book that I have, and I can't remember where it is, but it actually shows a representation of the planes of existence. So you have realms of vibration. So in this realm, you have, in reference to like dimensions, so you have dimensions that vibrate on a particular scale. Mm -hmm. So you have this dimension that vibrates at this density the next density, the next density, and then the next density. They're all vibrations, and that relates to um, how I'm seeing it, the levels of consciousness. And in between those relationships, you have bridges. You have the, 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 um, the in-between realm, which is what I'm actually seeing the human experience and the physical reality is, in itself, is a bridge between something you as the physical body having have you as the soul having a physical experience is a bridge in itself. Mm -hmm. So if that's a bridge, then it's a bridge between the material and the, and the non-material, the, the spirit. So the, the same way. So if we are birthed from the earth, if this experience, the part of you that is this experience is birthed from the earth, then there has to be an infinite representation of the earth itself.
So a plane of existence. That's why I'm I'm more comfortable calling this place a, a an earth plane, uh, mm -hmm. a plane of existence in reference to vibrations and consciousness and so on and so forth. Having said that, you have to have a particular body in order to have an experience. So we have the earth itself, the continents within the earth that are within the water, the pond of the earth itself surrounded by the ice wall could be seen as the earth body and the soul of the earth body could be seen as the experience earth every living organism that is having an experience a water-based air breathing experience within the plane itself that doesn't mean that there aren't other planes of uh, experiences within this plane. This could be just seen as one body within one plane of experience. That's why, it's, that's why I say it's, it's not really import, as important to get caught up in the dome versus the infinite plane because once you start understanding the, the, non, the relationship between the non-physical and the physical or the, 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 the material and the spiritual, it'll make Sense, you know, things will start making more sense. So that's when I started going into to realize that when we have the, the relationship between the gas, the water, and the ethers, or the, or the, uh, the physical, excuse me, the physical, the mind, the body, the mind, and the soul, then you can see that the mind water, yeah, the, the mind water of your physical reality is your blood. It's, your, it's, it's like your conscious, your blood is your conscious, your representation of your soul. So like you can see like your DNA is held in, in your blood or in your experience. It's, it's like your main life force. It flows. It creates just like so, time. So we have the body. We have or the solid. We have the liquid and we or the mind. And we have the gas, which is which could be seen as your soul. When you see, and this is an experiment, experiment that you can do yourself that I've seen. If you put a little bit of water in a, uh, like a water bottle and you put it in the sun, it's going to expand. Like that, those, those elements expand, or the, the, the water expands into a gas and it'll create pressure. So the consciousness, in order for the consciousness to expand, you have to add an electrical charge to it. So the electrical charge that I'm seeing is, could be like the birth experience or the electrical charge of like heat, the heat that's charging up that those, those uh, molecules, those water molecules that are held within that bottle, they expand the experience itself or the bottle itself. So. In reference to the expansion of consciousness overall and vibration overall, there's, there's an expansion and then there's a contraction. You have the contraction of the solid or the physical, which is very rigid. It's fixed in its shape and it's fixed in its volume. The scientism community, the university system community, the heliocentric dead planet, dead planets of body, body planets out there. It's based upon the rigid interpretation of this experience and doesn't go into at all the non-physical reality and it keeps you there keeping you in the mind control of maintaining the vibrations of your water or your blood so not only your physical blood but your non-physical blood so your soul has a vibration and when you have the relatorial and the spiritual plane you have an agreement to come in here when your soul chose to come into this experience, you had to at first been capable of having this damn experience. You had to at least been like, all right, well, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to do whatever it is I got to do. Well, first, hold on. Before You need a pass before you can get in the door. You can't just show up here and just be like, well, I'm going to do this. No, you have to have quali qualified to have this experience. So without going into specifics, you can see that as a vibration. That vibration is carried down through each experience, how I'm seeing it in your blood and in how 
you experience your consciousness or your ex how your consciousness experiences its reality. So the challenges of the experience, like a dream space, like being subjected to a nightmare, if you get scared in the nightmare and don't realize that you can do whatever it is that you want in the dream, then you'll pop out of that dream or you'll wake, you'll wake up or you'll pop into another dream, whatever it is, you won't be the creator of that experience. You won't be the creator of that dream because you have subjected yourself to a rigid, volume, fixed volume, fixed shape version of reality which is limited to the experience itself. When you do that, you separate yourself from the capabilities of your higher mind, which is your liquid state, and you separate yourself from the activation points of your, your soul essence. It, it, it goes up like as much as the information comes down through the experience for you to experience, you send through your receiver and each experience, each thought, each step that you take, each day that you that each day that goes by is logged in to your soul experience as a whole. You're forever expanding. So you are expanding from the physical through the liquid to the gaseous state. This is your blood having this experience in the non-physical reality. So when we, like I said, in order to realize that all this stuff is going on you have to get out just like in your dream space you go through you go from being subjected to your emotional body and re reacting and responding to nightmares in a in a fight or flight uh, or in a flight perspective being subjected to the lower vibrations of fear uh, and you get locked into the experience so when you get locked into the physical experience, you're, you're locking yourself out. So in reference to that, your blood has a relationship to this. Your mind, your higher mind has a relationship to this. Your soul has a relationship to this. And the challenge of this experience is to lock you into the solid state illusion, the rigid, fixed shape, fixed volume illusion. When you do that, you can be controlled. Your time can be manipulated, your consciousness can be manipulated, and the experience itself can be manipulated. That's what I'm seeing what is the heliocentric model, the scientific community that has no understanding or giving a shitness of going into alchemy as a whole, which is why they can't talk about ancient commission uh, sciences, their interpretations of alchemy. This is why and all of the ancient technology, which is the or origination of technology today that supersedes any of the little trinkets, the microwave trinkets that are coming out today. It, it can't tell any of those stories because it'll inher inherently start to allow people to activate their non physical blood and their physical blood. It's the same thing. But Activate your experience, your consciousness as a whole. This is what I'm seeing. Okay. So in relation to... Go ahead. Go let, ahead. let me ask you something. So when we talk about Antarctica and we talk about the whole thing about the ice ring, do you think that that itself is another boundary? Do, do you think that us embracing the dome idea contradicts the fact that that it's other land beyond the ice ring and this ties into the different blood types i want to go into the blood types of the different humans these lands that may be potentially be beyond the ring and uh maybe africa isn't the oldest continent maybe um if there's lands beyond the ice ring who, who's to say what's the oldest continent once we introduce that factor so it's so much we can get into and if there's lands beyond the ring and this, this ancient map we're looking at you know with all of the land around it maybe this is not it maybe this is just what we stopped at when we were mapping the world and uh we never made it beyond this point so maybe there's infinite lands and then that would also make us have to reinvestigate this whole conversation because that means there may not be a such thing as a beginning to humanity. 
Which, yeah, that's what that's what gets into. That's what I was getting to. I was trying to kind of lost my train of thought because I, I wanted to go into the ice ring like you were talking about, but also the the idea of Pangea. So in reference to the expansion and the contraction, so you have the idea of all of the continents at one time being one continent or one one unit. And the center of that, the energetic center of that, uh, can be seen as <clears throat> the uh, the Arctic Circle or the North the North Pole. So you have that could be how I'm seeing it is that that's an energy of some sort that there's some kind of it affects it affects the entire experience as a whole. And if we are of an understanding that at one time all of the the continents were together, they, and now they have spread out. Who's to say that the the ice circle itself isn't expanding? And who's to say that there isn't anything beyond that that's expanding? And so on and so forth. And what does that expansion and contraction relate to in reference to what could possibly be beyond the ice ring? Like I said, in understanding the human experience, we can, or in understanding the earth experience by understanding the human experience, if we start to understand more about what's going on with the Arctic Circle and that whole energy that's going on there with the Meru, the islands of Meru, the mm -hmm. rivers up there, the affecting of the tides and all that other stuff, these are actual sciences that we are being kept from interpreting and understanding that will help us understand the relationship that this plane has to the infinite space or a dome or whatever. And anytime I say dome, I'm not really comfortable with saying a dome. Like anytime I say it, like just naturally, I just don't feel comfortable saying that because I see this as like a realm. There's a realm there, but in that realm in between, like I said, the, the dimensions, and this, this can go into like that, video what that National Geographic or the Discovery Channel went into where they went deep under and they uh, hit like a barrier of water where it was it, it like created they couldn't go past it that's what it was it was like another barrier another whatever it is so I know some people have seen that video uh, but Who's to say that that's not the same thing that's happening in in the sky? And who's to say that the stars or and the, the the night sky don't represent the next vibration of experience when you expand your consciousness to go into the next realm? But until then, you are limited to whatever kind of experience is within the different bubbles or domes or whatever you want to call it, bodies of uh, experience within this plane of existence. So this main point being is that this plane of existence, how I'm seeing it is that what the heliocentric model did is created this idea of, you know, an infinite out there somewhere to separate us from our infinite right here-ness. Who's to say all these other planets that they created don't actually exist or represent bodies of land and actual people or experiences that are within this plane. So the universe doesn't exactly exist out there. The universe could exist right here in every angle, in every direction and wherever you go, you know what? Another experience. You so right because uh, that's something that me and Infinite Plane was going into, and it's real interesting. The fact that when you think of all of these big deceptions, whether it be religious, whether it be NASA, it don't matter what it is. At the root of it all, on a basic level, the goal is to get you to look up into the sky and not forward or into the mirror. You see. And that's deep when you start looking at these old maps and you see all of this land that's all around us. And we talk about the idea of Earth being an infinite plane. And then you start thinking, hey, what if space is not above us? Maybe space is all around us. 
and above us as well and beneath us. When you get to the ground level, that in itself is a whole cosmos that start from the surface of the ground and go down, down, down. You know, they drilled past eight miles. They never found a core. So there is no earth core. So that's why I done away with Pangea. If I were to accept Pangea, it'll be in a Petri dish type way where we can say maybe the creator dripped some type of life substance into this waters, earth waters, and it's, you know, scattered out. Just if you could think of like a, a drip of any kind of concoction that a scientist may have and you put it in a Petri dish and it spreads out and you can see the different little parts of that concoction separating by density and creating different uh, chemical reactions within a Petri dish. Maybe that's what we're experiencing here in this earth pond. And maybe there is a dome. Now there's so much proof to support a dome. But I think the whole taboo and the, you know, they got this thing called homophobic. It has an, also a thing called domophobic. I'm not domophobic, <laughs> but I'm gonna say this though. I'm gonna say that the dome really needs to be put on the table because it represents that feminine. If you look at the Egyptian cosmology, it's represented as the sky goddess Nut. It's very important because some kind of way when we look up and we see that central um, stationary North Pole, it supports a dome or a tent like celestial. You know what I think? I think the whole thing about the dome that makes it a taboo is that we think barrier. We start to think barrier. That's but, it. Yeah, that's you, the thing. You, you know, and that's the thing that that I have with it too. That's why I say, hey, maybe there's a dome, but it's made out of saline water. You know, there's a different kind of water they find at the bottom of the ocean. Maybe we're just enclosed in a celestial sphere that's not made out of um, no solid dome, but just... If you think of a uh, earth circle surrounded by the ice wall and just think of that earth circle when you pop the theater popcorn in the microwave, how the bag bubble up and create a dome over the top of that popcorn. If you could think yeah. of like um, a bubble right over the top of a cup, if you had a cup of, of beer or something and that was just a huge bubble dome over the top of that cup. Maybe the dome is composed of like a material like that, like a simple bubble that, and if you look at a bubble real close, you can see the different colors and movement on the surface of a bubble. I don't know if you, you ever paid attention to that, but if you blow bubbles and look at it, you can see the spectrums of light on a bubble kind of moving around the surface of it and maybe that's what the stars are who knows but i know that there's a lot of evidence to support some kind of sphere and maybe this ice wall and this ties into the hollow earth theory when we talk about underground cities maybe this is how we move to and fro our different earth puns because think about it none of this stuff can be far-fetched if we had the belief of space and we moving through different galaxies so it, it will make sense moving all around us to different earth puns and different continents. And I don't think it'll be UFO or alien type people, but regular humans that look like us. And I think that maybe they asking the same questions we asking. So this get real deep. And I just wanted you to just build on that. The science makes sense for the, the science makes sense, but what uh, keeps me from subscribing to only something like that, like like I said, it could be, it's a what I'm really feeling is that it gets a blend between the two, because once you start to understand the dome makes sense from a scientific observation, at the same time there's a vibe, there's a spiritual understanding of what that dome represents. So there's an energy that the dome dome represents that in the the dome as representing like the physical. The, like the relationship with science and the spirit. The dome itself, like the word dome to me is from like a scientific observation or a linear observation. But at the same time, we can understand more deeply what the dome represents if we look at it from a spiritual perspective, a non-physical perspective. It'll help us understand the alchemy of what that dome represents. So that's what I'm seeing is that it's as like a transition 
point between worlds like how the the planets are sold to us by the heliocentric model it's a representation like a lot of the like venus represents a particular style of experience like a particular person uh um Mars, Saturn, Uranus, all these planets have actual astrological representations in our birthing process. So that could be also tied into the non-physical interpretations of what this experience, the dome represents. So the dome, the, the non-physical essence. Like I said, um, only focusing on the physical reality of the dome like from the infinite plane uh, society, like his perspective, what we was talking about, it can be sold as another trap. That's that's why I have trouble, uh, not necessarily trouble, but hesitation with focusing only on like the definition of the domes because uh, if we only approach it from the scientific perspective and don't see it from an alchemical perspective or the relationship between the physical and the non-physical, the masculine and the feminine, then we won't be really understanding what's really going on. So that's why I'm seeing like the blend, like we were saying earlier, the blend between the two, the infinite space, the infinite plane married with the... Um, the finite space of like a dome experience or an earth circle or an earth body experience. And in order to transition out of that space, whether you go on a horizontal plane or a vertical plane, expanding would be a vertical. Well, expanding, expanding is both horizontal and vertical, but in order to transition to another experience, at a higher vibration, you have to expand into the net, the stars or the next, the higher, the higher space. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like the, uh, there's, there could be, like we were saying earlier, it could be all kinds of domes all over the place, but the stars itself, what's beyond the, the interpretation of the, the dome stars? Like, is there a, a plane, a realm there that's beyond all of the other domes that are around all of, all the other place the now see that's an interesting question that's where we get into speculation most of all of yeah. this is speculation but when we mm -hmm. look up at the stars this is the whole dangerous thing of what you just did when you look up at the stars and seek for another place to exist above your head that's no different than what nasa is trying to do they're trying to mm -hmm. create these fake things they got us looking up but there's no the ancestors spoke of the stars as souls luminaries but everyone's trying to get us to speak of them as some kind of place we can live on these luminaries are clearly light beings yeah so, that's where i was coming from i wasn't coming from like a physical like you can jump into a plane and go through there to there from a vibratory aspect like when you die like so supposedly die you're raising your vibration so not physically taking your physical body into but raising into another realm of existence that's where i was coming from now, in reference now, to. now i totally understand what you're saying but when we talk about that we enter we dealing with metaphysics so this realm of existence we're gonna have to begin now to paint a picture of it and interpret it the christians will say it's streets of gold then the religious folks start we start debating on what this realm of existence gonna be that's outside of this realm so that's why i said when we look up we're looking up into realms that's not physical when we keep science into the equation and we deal with density we know that the realms above us is the gaseous realms that rise like helium does. It breaks mm -hmm. the laws. When we understand density, you know that gravity is just a grave that they gave us with a false solar system to keep us on a bottomless pit free for all eternal fall and to keep us looking up while hiding infinite land. So the crazy thing about it all is that when we talk about these different realms that exist outside of this earth realm that we're living in right now, it can really be used against us in a very dangerous mm -hmm. way because then we start putting more power into those realms that we speculating about as opposed to the water in the realm we living in right now that's being under attack. 
So what I'm saying is the big psyop is to get you looking up. And when mm -hmm. we go and look at these old maps, they got all of these continents around us. And it really makes me wonder, man, what if we got family members that have, think about this, right? Now this goes into the whole Columbus theory. I've been doing research just like some others that after the slave trade, Columbus went on to find more and more land beyond Antarctica. Basically the UN treaty was them sealing off the gates. So just like they said, you can't explore space and go find your own planet. What I'm telling you, if there's infinite continents, there might be enough land for each family to have its own continent. Why would you mm -hmm. want to do that? I don't know, but just saying, who knows? Maybe if today, if you were a voyaging soul, a free human, and you were able to voyage this earth and live off the land as you was intended to be before the deceivers took control, maybe we'll all still be venturing outward or venturing inward because when we go to the inside of the earth, we reach the North Pole and the ancestors also said that's a portal that we need to check out and hop into. Maybe we pop out into another pun. Remember in Star Trek when they teleport to different places in space, they tell you about teleporting. Maybe the North Pole is like a, you know, beam me up Scotty. Think about the uh, spaceship de deception where they got the light coming down and think about the North Pole. Maybe mm -hmm. you, you enter the North Pole and you, with your attempt, you travel to whatever Earth pun you want to pop up in at that Earth Pole and pop out. And maybe that's how we travel. So it's so much speculation we can get onto, but it's all based off of this provable, tangible map that we do have from the ancients as well as texts that said there are other lands. Now we talk about the city of Atlantis and I'm gonna wrap this up real quick and let you build on this. But we talk about the city of Atlantis. And when you think about Atlantis, Atlantis is made just like the Earth circle. I did a video on it. So check that video out guys to uh, know what I'm talking about here. Basically Atlantis is a bunch of circles within circles and a bunch of cities, right? And when you look at the earth that we live in, it's the same way. And when you think about the hidden land, maybe that's where the ancestors went. Maybe they're fighting the ancestors underground and in the air. There's so much we can get into when we consider this. So I'm going to let you build at this time. Well, like in reference to the concentric cir circles of Atlantis, um, there's tangible evidence of the our ancestors in Louisiana in um, Poverty Point, we have the Washita Moors who actually built Poverty Point, which is an ancient land of the mound builders. So all of the North American and South American indigenous and Aboriginal peoples were mound builders. So you have mound builders in the Bay Area. You had a mound that was a side three stories tall and a city block long in North Oakland, which is called Emeryville now that they built a a, a, um, a a mall on top of and it was actual burial grounds it was a sacred burial ground they actually before they built a mall on top of it they built um a dance pavilion on top of it so this is a, this is part of the spiritual warfare of separating us from our ancestors and in relation to the ancestors that are beyond the storylines that are, we are just aware of now that could be possibly beyond the ice ring and so on and so forth, or the portals that go into whatever other experience there goes. There's actually tangible evidence of the concentric circles um, of uh, a community in, it's like Northeastern Louisiana, where some of the earliest civilization, the earliest peoples, the Aboriginal people of the Americas, the Washita Moors actually built space and that could be a representation of the circles beyond the circles or the land beyond the land or maybe even some kind of connection to whatever it is that whatever it is my main point being is that there are stories that exist in relation to the human story from the blood all the way to the actual uh, experience earth that we are being kept from and one of the main ones that we are being kept from is not only the, the earth itself, the, the, the heliocentric model and the flat earth, but another one that a lot of people aren't talking about is 
I don't know if you wanted to go into it right now, but is the blood. And this could be in reference to the the other people, other family members, or whatever it is. Whatever it, be, whatever it is, there is some science that is related to, or an alchemy that is related to the blood that mainstream science acts like they don't know what's going on, just like they hide a lot of history. And um, a lot of people are, are really don't talk about, but there are some basic observations of our blood, our life force energy, um, on a, on a material water format that we don't even understand. And that could be related to other people or other um, civilizations or other planes of existence that are beyond the ice, on other lands, on other continents that are being hidden or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's deep that you mentioned that because you wanted to talk to me about the old blood type. I've been told that the old blood type is one of the oldest on earth and that's interesting because i'm actually o negative blood type myself and i believe you're o negative as well and mm -hmm. i think that's not a coincidence i think everything happened for a reason maybe certain people are drawn for particular purposes but i do wanted you to build on the blood types i have now some slides that you email me one being that the female being is a portal between the spiritual realm and the physical that's as above so below dealing with the great mother that i deal with a lot and that's one of the things that drew me to your channel because you deal with that science and you also tied into the cosmology which leads back to the arc and the plane the, the masculine feminine and even at the north pole where you have the hole in the middle of the earth that's being penetrated by a pole. So we see this sex thing going on on two levels there. And, and also tying that into the lands beyond the Antarctic ring. And that can be endless relatives of this human family. And that ties into some of the questions and mysteries that we have with the blood types that we can't get right. So I want you to build on that. Okay, so in reference to the old blood type and in reference to the, the portal between the spiritual realm and the physical realm, you're, you're seeing when you're born into this reality, you have the traits of your mother and your father. You come through the portal. Your spirit comes through the portal of your mother's vessel and her spirit into this experience so there is a relationship a very obvious and needing to be understood relationship between the non-physical and the physical reality and the body itself is birthed is made up of the same elements from the earth so we are birthed from the earth through the feminine energy or the material realm all of these balances have a meaning and a purpose the intelligent energy that is the life force energy of the experience er is the blood so when you have the experience er of the body and the soul coming through another portal that could be seen as another infinity you can constantly create babies upon babies that's an infinity in itself it's just like uh the the, the tree to the seed to the to the earth to the tree, to the seed, or the fruit, the seed, and all, so on and so forth. It's just another version of infinity. So it's not how I'm seeing this when I question my reality. I want to know, like, what are the relationships? We have so much diversity, not only of peoples here, but of uh, various kingdoms, the animal kingdom, the uh, was the insect kingdom, like all, all these different types of uh, living beings here. There has to be, I don't see it as this being the only, like, there, there's there's more. If it's infinite, then there's other experiences there. So in reference to, to keep on track, we have the life force energy of the blood that comes through as the experience or the, the catalog of your experience. And when you look at the blood, the red blood cell compatibility table, um, there's an actual trend here there's some kind of um representation or some kind of there's a vibration here that makes some kind of scientific mathematical sense and some scientific science 
scientists have even gone into interpreting this information. And one of the main ones that will help us understand not only the human experience, but the Earth's experience and possibly beyond the, 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 the ice ring or whatever's going on here, peoples or beings beyond this place is the old, the old blood, um, the old blood cell. So in particularly the old negative because what they call the old the uh, old blood is the oldest blood in out of all the bloods the old negative in in um, in particular can give to any of the other the A the old positive the old negative B A B the old negative can fit inside of every other being. It can fit inside of every other, so it can be seen as the origin of all of these other offshoots, for lack of a better word, of the original blood, how I'm seeing this. So have that, and then we have at the same time, none of the other blood can be taken into an old negative body. So from a vibratory space, mm. it actually fights it. And this goes into like the... Um, when when uh, people who are in relationships, if, if you are an old negative mother and you have or a, a, an A positive or a B negative baby, then the body will actually fight that baby in a way that mothers have to take some kind of like, I can't remember what it is, they have to take some kind of hormone or something. So the, bo the, the body won't fight the baby as an intruder of that of the old negative body. So there is something going on here in the relationship between the bloods and, and not only on like a spiritual interpretation of what's going on, but on an actual scientific observation that is not being shared. And if you were to ask me, I honestly, I think they know exactly what's going on, the so-called, they know exactly what's going on with the differences in blood, which is why we are consumed by the differences in races. It's just another way to separate people and keep people further distracted, because if you're distracted by an illusion within an illusion, a box within a box, you won't know what's going on, because you get out of one box, you're in another box. You just... You're just separating yourself even further. But if you start getting into the essence of the blood, when you start getting down to the roots of the storyline, the diversity starts to make an organic sense. It starts to make a natural mm -hmm. sense that actually empowers people. Yep, you so, know, and it actually unites us under what we have in common, which is earth. That's very deep and interesting what you're saying because the concept of infinite human family infinite lands and then we talk about the concept of something else we all have in common which is we all come through a mother we see that nature has a process and a selective type role that it gave to the woman we even say mother nature mother earth and we all come from mothers and we all are made of mother or matter and they'll even tell you that even when the baby's in the womb how the baby's being formed by the very flesh of the mother. So it's, it's very deep. And when you talk about all of these ancient cosmologies who had the flat earth before we did today, at the center of most of them was a great mother. And they had an attitude about earth that we don't have today. Something I see in the flat earth community is sort of a rock and roll type attitude for lack of better words where it's like hey man screw all of that mother nature talk pass me a beer and a cigarette and let's talk some equations and mathematics about flat earth as opposed to that brother sanchez save the earth let's unite type crap you know so i think that actually is something they made into what's the word corny let's use that word you know so to keep us away from it and to make it less entertaining. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why it's so hard to make conscious hip hop music because it's hard to make entertaining music with a good message because we're so dumbed down today that it sound better when I'm saying how many people I killed on the record, you know? 
So it, it's just a, they got us at a level where we ain't compassionate. And I think that if we understood that it was more people out there that's being dominated, they hiding some of our reality. Re mm -hmm. Spiritual aspects and land, physical aspects, false maps, all of that. So with all of that being said, I think that the concept of infinity mm -hmm takes away the idea that anything else exists other than this infinite plane. And then when we talk reincarnation, whether you want to say you reincarnate in heaven or you reincarnate in a Jeru uh, Middle Eastern heaven, I think they call it Valhalla. Everyone has the heavens. They say you're reborn in a certain place. Wherever you reborn at becomes physical to you. Wherever you open your eyes and you exist whatever frequency you own is going to become physicality to you so basically what i'm saying is the idea of infinity cancels out anything else because if this is an infinite plane that is infinity there's no end to it just people and lands and continents that stretches out and out um then there's no room for no other realms that mean infinity is they're all there is. So that mean that means reincarnation then becomes we coming back to different earth puns and different mothers in different wombs, different portals of a woman. And to me, when we talk heaven, if the H is silent, we say heaven is balanced, it's even, then maybe the whole human experience is connecting to Mother Nature on a level to where we have a mission to live in harmony with her and coexist with her instead of have a relationship with her where we go totally against her like we do today yeah how, how i see it on top of that is the um like various vibrations of infinity you can see a soul as a particular vibration or even in, into the blood or even into consciousness as a whole as a particular vibration and as the realm you can have infinity within a realm you can have it within a particular vibration so who's to say there's not another this can be like this the third density could be an infinity within the third density but as you raise your vibration or you raise your consciousness you can get into another infinite realm just based upon different experiences so that's that's what I was saying as as in reference to could possibly be related to the various blood types and we're in reference to like your consciousness as a whole, how you how your soul vibrates and down to the actual experience itself. Like as like we were talking about in the video before, like in order to have an experience, you have to qualify to have that experience on a vibratory space. So in order to engage in an infinite realm within a particular dimension or density, um, you have to, your soul has to have match energetically in some kind of way. And that's how, that's how I observe infinity, not just relative to the, the material realm, but having various um, vibrations of material realms that are relating to the vibration of your soul or your consciousness. And as you live through your experience, if you constantly subject yourself to the illusions, the, the limitations of the experience and don't expand beyond that experience, then you will grow horizontally instead of expanding in every angle into the next density or the next experience of infinity in the next realm. Mm -hmm. That's how I view, uh, visualize now, like the layers upon layers. Now, when we talk about a cross, which is a symbol of balance, when we talk about the X, which is the divine feminine, which is that plus sign, and you talk about the minus, which is the horizon, right? So like when we say that we're growing upward, we're growing upward, just for example, you grow up, you start off as a baby and just like a tree, a seed go into the ground, it goes down right and its purpose is to grow upward right but the whole thing is this yeah. when you jump the first thing you have to do is bend down to get the the uh force needed then it spring up you know so you gotta go down to go up 
And if you think about a tree which started a seed going into the ground and then it goes upward. And then its whole goal is to do what during its lifetime? It stand outward and all around by growing branches. And the big healthy trees, they grow beautiful branches that extend and connect throughout the whole forest. You know, when you drop a rock into the ocean, it start off as a small little ripple and it expands outward. And uh, this concept, they turned it to Pangea. Now, the whole thing about growing up in life, getting mature, getting wise is to move forward in life. Because if you're really growing up and getting wise and growing up like that tree, now you're moving again somewhere in your life. You're making headway by moving forward. So you want to move up and move forward like the tree that grows up and extend the branches outwards. And now you go your cross, there go your ma'at symbol. So it's all balance. If you just go all the way up, they call that you got your head so far up in the clouds that you're not mm -hmm. grounded. So then Brother Sanchez had to come and get us back grounded and say, hey, we can have so much upward knowledge and be so intellectual, but still neglect the things in front of our face that we partake in and participate in destroying our reality. Just to explain the, the, the algorithm of the New Age agenda and mm -hmm. the alien agenda, the New Age agenda is to focus on that uprooted head in the clouds mentality which is why it's so mainstream and which is why because it's limited you can sell you can sell a, a fake universe based upon these these aliens and extraterrestrials ufos and all this other stuff based upon and and internally people create their universe the artificial universe inside based upon what they've been programmed to believe as that linear it's just another linear version of reality being pawned off as every angle of reality, the upward and the outward. So they're selling a, a linear program of, you know, new age and an awakening and love and light and all this other stuff, but it's completely separated from the knee, the soil. It's completely separated from the seed, separated from the earth, separated from the true understandings of what that is it, because they can make a profit off of selling one. They made a profit, so-called they made a profit, off of destroying the earth now the new age can get off of the idea of healing the earth through this artificial version mm -hmm. of consciousness that's being gift wrapped by uh these so-called powers that be well you know what it is i like to call it just getting back to nature one thing we have to admit is that the powers that be have changed our reality to a way that it's not the way nature intended. You do agree mm -hmm. with that, right? So yeah. since, since the people that control our reality have hijacked it, hijacked science, hijacked nature, destroying the people, the children of nature and nature herself, then it do becomes a thing where the children of nature, for example, if you if, if you in a house with your mother and uh some intruders bust in and attack your mother, you're not gonna stand there and watch them. You're gonna do something. So mother nature is all of our moms. She take care of us, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And we got some people that wake up every day and destroy her. And she have no hands and feet but us, you know? Think of your mother. She gonna be looking for her strong sons to help her. So you're gonna be that product which she created. She get the benefit. Mama saying, listen, son, I raised you your whole life. You sucked on my nipple. When you grow big and strong, I shouldn't have to ask you to protect mommy from an intruder, right? So same thing with nature. We put seeds in the ground. She grows all of this wonderful fruit. The water is constantly renewing itself, cleansing itself. Yet there's an intruder, there's a bully that's picking on mommy, pausing in her water, pausing in her seeds. Now, Mother Nature ain't got no hands and arms. We are the hands and arms to fight and speak on her behalf. So this is where you get people like me 
who coming in with, listen, y'all, we got to take care of Mother Nature. We got to undo all of the things they're doing to, to harm Mother Nature. Why? Because our children got to inherit this place. So it may sound a little corny or it may come off as, you know, some mm -hmm. rainbow speech, but it's really the basic talk that really a lot of people died, environmentalists and people, they trying to build certain factories in certain part of our earth that's sacred natural habitats, and people died to protect these places. They're trying to destroy Mother Earth from her very soil foundation, the scalp, the roots, all the way upwards. And we're the only thing in between that. So yeah, you mm -hmm. know, I wouldn't consider that new age would you? No, that's that's the controlled opposition to get people confused. That's mm -hmm. that's what that's out the new age is out there for. Mm -hmm. and understanding nature is understanding humanity. Understanding nature is understanding the earth plane and how all these stories exist and how the so-called powers that be exist. The the new age, just like the new age adopts all of the, the understandings of energy, for one example, like crystals. Just because the new age program is like heavy on crystal energy for one example doesn't make crystals not like a bad like a bad thing it doesn't make it just because they've adopted it it just adopted it to keep people in that system and also keep people out of that system and create like an identity so the new age as a whole can be seen as the artificial version of understanding what crystal energy is in reference to like the natural connection to nature like it's to keep it's to keep people in that egoic, artificially egoic understanding, half-ass understanding of something in order to build up something else. A lot of people like in order to understand what's really going on here, like you have to go through steps. Nature is one big obvious step. It's the experience. You can't have an experience er if you don't have an experience. The physical realm, the natural realm, is a big part, the mother of this experience. So since people are so caught up in the, uh, the, the linear version or only the experience or like the, the conscious reality, like you were saying earlier, talking about um, how people interpret something i can't can't remember what you're saying but for example all the patriarchal programming that's going on in everything it's one version of reality at the expense of the balances of that masculine energy and overall it has an it has a, a meaning and a purpose not only to attract people but to detract to, to keep people deflect people away from it so Talking about nature and healing nature is talking about healing the wounds of this system. In order to keep this system from expanding into a natural space, they got to keep people from healing the wounds and healing the wounds of the, the divine feminine energy and the true divine masculine energy, the relationships with nature, keeping people from understanding, understanding and overstanding those relationships maintains the limbo space to where so-called powers that be can maintain their dominance over people who are just in that well you know whatever whatever is just you know you're just talking about whatever you know formalize you gotta get your roots like plant your roots in something if you're going to plant your roots in anything start off by planting your roots in understanding understanding and overstanding what nature actually is what the balances of nature are. Not the new age garbage bullshit version of thinking, oh, love and light and compassion and all that other nonsense. Get into understanding the basic relationships between true science and the spirit, the electric and the magnetic, the divine feminine and the divine masculine, the light and the dark, the up and the down, the hot and the cold, all of these balances of nature have a meaning and a purpose. And if people want to start, you know, calling it whatever it is, that's on them. I don't even pay no mind to people, you know, talking about that stuff because it's, it's the intention that's behind it. Yeah, I totally understand. You mean when they start 
giving different names to Mother Nature, turn it into religions and all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's to control. You have to label it something like the, in order to control it. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. they, they need to create these boxes or I, I, I'm this and I'm that. And it's just garbage when you subscribe to only one version of reality. But it's so attractive because it's comfortable for people because you create a new community no different than a flat earth community or the new age community or the political community or conspiracy truth or community all these communities are talking about the same story like who are who are the experience errors that are building that that make up those communities how can you subject yourself to only a limited version of what's going on in this reality if you don't really know whose it is and what it is that's experiencing the reality in the first place? That's where I'm coming from and where I'm seeing where you're coming from and in interpreting the balances and understandings, understandings and overstandings of nature as a whole. People don't want to go into there because they're too comfortable in their boxes, whatever they've chosen. And it's, it's sad and unfortunate because going into that is to unlock the mysteries of yourself. Like you say, as above, so below. I can look into a river and see my face there and make corrections to my appearance. You see, before mirrors existed, our ancestors can look over a river or into a lake, see their complexion. And you can see yourself will be revealed to you with your own eyes. So that's very divine when you think about the Bible and all religions say that we created in the image of the creator. So what is the creator? The creation. So by studying the dimensions and the creation and asking all of these questions that the scientists ask, guess what? The question mark is a divine symbol because just think about the word question, the root word of it is quest. Now, what are we on a quest to do? We on a quest to get back to the creator. And when you think about as above, so below and the mirror reflections, if you take a question mark and mirror itself and oppose it to itself and stick it together and marry it like a yin yang, guess what you get? A keyhole or a light bulb or unk. Mm -hmm. Because the question marries the answer. And guess what? Once you get the answer, that leads to another question. Because this yeah. answer, now that I know this, now this leads to this question. And it never stops. So the questions we have is just the quest on our way back to the all, the mind that created everything. So when we talk about us being created in the image of the creator, and we asking these questions in flat earth, globe earth, I think that some of us are just more so caught up into understanding nature to understand ourselves you know what i mean because when i think about the heliocentric cosmos i see why one of the biggest reasons they wanted to create that cosmology and one of the big reasons was that they get to interpret they get to interpret the nature of the creator and interpret the creation so we're thinking about a chaotic cosmology where there's craters and asteroids and comets and a vacuum and different hellish bodies that you can't live on and some of them made of pure lava and just uh, a, a very frightening universe that the heliocentric model gave us and the reason they did that was to associate that creation with that type of creator so we understand that any creator that are de designed that type of model has to be a uh, creator that's not balanced a creator that's chaotic and fear inducing and very narcissistic yeah, yeah you know so it's crazy because you understand the need for you now to redefine your own reality with science and facts and provable observations and experiments because this is what they avoided to give us the lie and they thrusted us in a science that was really a religion. Like you said, the synthetic universe, there's a synthetic science. And you know when you're dealing with people who have that synthetic science bug, because they start saying stuff like, hey man, science said this, science said that, as if science have a mouth. 
Really, that is the God of their science speaking, the one who created the theories. And you notice that these theories change every year. And these people come back to you saying, hey, guess what? Science changed. True science never changes because once you prove something to be fact, it's consistent and you can always prove it to be fact. Everyone can prove it with the same experiment forever and ever and it'll never change. The synthetic science changes because it's based on a lie and we know when you tell one lie, you got to keep telling many lies and changing the lies. So that's why their science changes, but the flat earth truth always remains. That's so important because when we're talking about proving flat earth from a scientific level, that's giving the people back freedom back freedom to interpret the reality and to understand the nature of our creator with a proper picture of the creation because if you're trying to understand the creator and you don't understand the creation you can never do it you know you understand the creator through the creation therefore provable science beats any speculations or belief however beliefs and speculation have their place because all experiments start from a belief that's why the scientism community has to like you said it changes because they can make a profit off of that they can make a profit off of not knowing apparently not knowing something and then discovering seven planets in the goldilocks area <laughs> that we could possibly get they could constantly sell because it's mostly about stealing your time yeah. if your time is stolen then your consciousness is stolen your your engagement in there is stolen and it's a balance between stolen and being given away because you are being subjected to the challenges of this re this reality by buying into the illusions of time stealers or time magicians who make their money off of parasiting off of your focus and your willingness to be locked into those linear versions of reality just like technology technology tech, like i was saying in the last video technology of today is no less than like 40 years old and then being sold for a $500 iPhone or whatever yeah, it is, yeah. you know, and, and even beyond that, you take it a step even further, ancient technology predates any of this. If you take it a step even further, the technology of the human experience out, outranks all of this shit. So the, the body <laughs> itself is a tech, you can go all the way back. So we get locked into and start worshiping and say, oh, well, this is this is why people, when I go out and anywhere and start talking about what, you know, any anything, flat earth, the soul, whatever, and somebody talk, well, don't you have a smartphone? I'm like, no, I actually don't have a smartphone. I have a flip phone. But then when they, that same mentality is, you know, well, don't you benefit from capitalism? And then I tell them, well, what is capitalism without the colonial genocide of the indigenous and the aboriginal people? So you're telling me, <laughs> yeah, so like you don't, if you don't question any of those realities, then you're not really, you're not really, you're creating a foundation. It's no different than some kind of politicians thinking he's the, the big shit or the president or whatever, and, and really not going into whose land you're sitting on right now. What, how did you get where you are right now? What, who built the throne that you're sitting on? What blood, are you not looking at the blood and the bones that are on the ground right in front of your face? No, because you make your money off of distracting people from the reality that helps people heal the wounds that allows them to expand outside of the reality that you wanna keep people in. So mm -hmm. that goes all the way into the heliocentric model and beyond, and like you said, the questions, once you get to one question, you get you answer that question, and then you have another question. These parasites and the, the, the parasitic consciousness that makes its money off keeping people in a particular vibration of consciousness keeps people answering illusory, unanswerable answerable questions based upon a heliocentric universe or whatever and never getting to any asking any other questions and in fact defending the illusory questions that shouldn't exist in the first place because they they're not talking about what's obvious to nature so yeah. we don't get to expand into higher vibrations of consciousness into higher vibrations of questioning our reality because we subject ourselves to particular vibrations that allow us 
to be stagnant and actually just fester and these wounds will never get healed. And we actually literally put on all this weight, all this density and weigh ourselves down, whether it's psychologically or actually physically, it manifests from not being able to tap in to the highest vibrations of our experience, the soul essence, the non-physical reality, the questions of the experience and the experience-er as a whole. We don't get to activate those questions at all, on purpose. On purpose, because you know what? Once they give us belief, belief stop your questioning. Because think about it, you can have a question based on a belief. Because you believe that there's a million dollars in my closet. Now, what if you never search the closet? Then you can live for eternity with that belief. And guess what? The whole idea of you believing that it's a million dollars in my closet, you will never stop and say, hey, let me go and check the closet to prove my belief to be true or not. Basically, what religion does is say, hey, we don't want to look into the closet what we going to do is we just going to either believe or not believe that the million dollars is in the closet. And based on those two Hegelian dialectics, guess what? We can create a whole rhetoric, a whole literature, a whole. Uh, think about it. Christianity is divisive within itself based upon it was created on different speculators who went against real science because think about it. Science is really a verb. It's not a noun. Science is really an action you take, the scientific method. But what happens is with the fake synthetic science, they give you this noun. People say science said this or science said that. That's like me saying exercise said this or exercise said that because science is a field of study. And that's an action. Studying it is an action. So in order to, to do science, you have to be a scientist who performs the scientific method. Now you actually engage in science as an activity. So the synthetic science, like you say, is the whole belief system matrix where once I give you a belief, it stops the action of experimenting. You don't have to, hey man, either you believe me or not. Anybody that's mm -hmm. religions, they come to you just like, remember that show Ripley's, believe it or not? Everybody that's religious, that's how they come to you. The first thing a uh, Muslim say, do you believe the Quran? First thing a Christian say, do you believe the Bible? Because when you accept the belief, you enter their reality. Because that's a reality based on beliefs and not facts. So it's, it's different forms of science. And the science they teach in school is theoretical based on theories and not facts and them all of the scientists that come along and try to prove those theories whether to be true or not they end up being silenced and done away with because we're dealing with a science that's a monopolized system of belief yeah it's like the illusion it's the illusion of control and that's that's what you reminded me of when you said that story about the, the money in the closet you reminded me of something that I just remember reminded myself of the other day. Uh, it's really it, it is this control essence that people that people have that how I'm seeing it now is no different than like uh, how I say the non the, the the separated from spirit the parasites who are basically like hollowed out entities. Uh, live through our experience and live through controlling us with illusions. And this could be seen as the, like a story that uh, I remembered the other day that relates directly to what you were saying. Uh, back when I was like, I must have been like 12, 12 years old or something like that. I had a friend and we were already friends, just kid friends. And uh, this, he, he didn't have any friends i was like one of his main friends mm -hmm. and he uh he, he was scared of losing me as a friend because he didn't really have any friends at all mm -hmm. and he said <laughs> he said uh in order to keep me as a friend and also to maintain control he promised me that he was gonna get me a super nintendo because his cousin 
lit, uh, worked at a KB toy store and he just like held on to that. And it never like, of course I never got a Super Nintendo because it was just a big ass lie because yeah. he just wanted to hold on to that that control. Cause I would always ask, you know, where's my Super Nintendo at, man? You, you told me, you <laughs> promised me. So yeah. it was a whole thing. I mean, we were still friends. It, it became a joke after a while, but at the, at the origin of that story, knowing a little kid ain't gonna be able to do that. Like Super Nintendo's at that time, like 150 something dollars or whatever yeah. like that. But the, the main point was that there's some kind of gaps that get filled with these illusions that people need in some kind of way. And no different than the heliocentric model, like they, like they, like I said in previous videos, they put themselves out there to be superheroes. No different than creating villains, like uh, the the every single war, the Gulf of Tonkin, the Syrian stuff, the the, the Sir, Syrian Syria stuff that's going on right now, Gaddafi and Libya, what were the Hitler and and all this other stuff, it. No, we, we focus on because what's manipulated in our, in our faces is the villainous story, but we don't see that the entire platform is being manipulated as a chess game. See, the villain program is just checkers, like I was saying in reference to the flat earth going mainstream. That's just checkers. You're watching a checker game. That ain't no different than believing any of the stories that are being told to you by the mainstream media about why they're going to war. That's checkered. Mm -hmm. The chess game is the actual storyline of war itself to be able to control the entire consciousness of humanity to to follow these pieces of shit assholes telling them everybody that they're in charge of you, leaders of you, to go to war, destroy other babies, other brothers and sisters, to make a profit for them, for the so-called powers that be. And this is why I say the human story is no, is not at all in any way separated from the flat earth storyline. All this shit's connected mm -hmm. and everything goes down to the power and control, not only of the physical bodies, but of your consciousness. I totally agree with that. It's deeper than that. And you know something else I think about when we talk about war and all of these nations that's supposedly at war and we find out that there's one power system at the top that's funding all of these wars. All of these wars that's been fought in history, they're funded by the same entity. You could say Jesuits, Jews, we know at the end that they all working together at the top of the pyramid. But these are the same people that's responsible for hiding land. This leads to something else. If we're true flat earthers, do we still believe in plate tectonics and magma core? Because remember, we can't believe in the core of the earth being magma and plate tectonics and all of that. And if you look at Eric Dubay's videos, he talk about what volcanoes may really be. That's a very interesting video you need to check out. But I'm saying is no one spoke about earthquakes. So now when we talk about mm -hmm. earthquakes, what are earthquakes if plate tectonics don't exist on flat earth? And I've come to some theories. Maybe earthquakes are underground wars that's being fought because I believe the hollow earth, flat earth are all bits and pieces of the truth and I believe the earth is hollow, it's an infinite plane and there are different puddles that may be enclosed in celestial spheres that we're yet to understand. But it's very interesting to think about earthquakes being underground wars and just to think about Admiral Byrd and a lot of naval, old naval military people wrote that there are submarine wars that were taking place in the Antarctic regions. And when we think about these submarine wars in the Arctic areas and the people saying that they saw technology that they never saw before in the Arctic areas, could this be technology from some of these continents beyond the ring? And maybe the whole UN treaty is all of our governments, right? This whole thing about the Galactic Federation I'm starting to look at that like the UN treaty because maybe they are the Lord of the Rings, the Lords of the Rings. You know, when you think about Atlantis and you think about the rings and all the hidden lands, maybe they're the Lords of the Rings keeping us all in this central area 
it, and maybe at one point in a lifetime of a human, you explored all of these realms. Maybe it increased your lifetime. Maybe it, it is a degree of immortality and some secrets to visiting the center uh, of the earth or venturing outward beyond the ring. Maybe th there are advanced civilizations there or ancient civilizations we thought vanished and went there. Maybe the UN is fighting some of these ancient civilizations underground and uh, in the Arctic area. And maybe what we're interpreting as underground wars, for example, Phil Schneider is not grays, but different underground races. And you know what's deep about it? Black plus white equals gray. And when we talk about all of the races of humanity, we talk about black and white being the most dynamic and the two that's responsible for keeping the entire tree the most divided. We're used to keep this tree. They play on the dynamics, the yin and yang, the black and white. Every other race that's yellow, brown, and in between is going to fall in between on that war spectrum between black and white. So what I see with this di dialectic with the races and the lands beyond the Antarctic ring is what if they're not just hiding the fact that there are other lands, but what if they're hiding the fact that on all of these lands beyond the ice ring, there are people of all races existing on each continent. And maybe there's not no continent that exists where that's just one quote unquote race of people. Like even if you go to China, yeah, you see a lot of Chinese, but there's still black, white, and every race on every continent. So if this is true, and we know that the word race was just recently created, you know, I speculate on this. When we talk about these blood types, if you think about it, if I'm O negative, you're O negative, my brother. There's some white people that's O negative, some Chinese people that's O negative. Blood type is not limited to a quote unquote race. So that shows right there, race is, is an illusion if we want to deal with blood. Even the color blood being red, no matter your skin color, your blood is red. There's clearly some that connect us all on the inside that's deeper than the surface. And what connects us all on the inside is the way we're made. The fact that we all got a consciousness. I'm a believer that the natural state of the human being is to do right. I believe if we didn't have any police that the earth would be a righteous earth without any police. I believe it actually be more righteous. So I do believe in the human. I believe we were made with everything we need to create heaven. But the fact that there's power structure and a patriarchal system that goes against mother nature keeps chaos perpetuated. Therefore, they can rule out of that chaos. But once mother nature prevails, her children will also. Once we can get past the surface features and get to what connects us on the outside being the earth and on the inside being our hearts. So I just wanted you to build on that concept of races are an illusion and lands beyond the ring with other races, quote unquote. To go back into the vibration that we were talking about earlier, um, in reference to races and cultures and so on and so forth, and even in language, language is a vibration in particular. English is basically like a lunchable version of vibratory language. It's shit. It's garbage. And just, just like, I mean, there's no essence there in comparison to the interactive energies that happen in other languages, in ancient languages. So from a vibratory perspective, we're largely first controlled on the soul level, then the mind, then the body. So the soul level is the non-physical or the, the language of your soul. And then you can go into the mind control of how this soul has a phys the, the bridge between the, the higher mind and the experience overall. And then locking down the actual physical body with illusions and sickness and disease, cancers and so on and so forth. So these are various uh, versions of vibration. The thing is, like you were saying, that there's different types of O negatives all over the place, and there's some some people. Of, uh, there's people of every races that are that are good at the essence, like children. At the essence, there's a purpose on every race of children that like, the heart of a child is of a high vibration. It hasn't been locked down through the densities of all this nonsense that we get downloaded by the experience as a whole. Point being is that in relation to the melanin and the blood types, 
The shit don't matter if you don't activate it yourself. This is why I was saying in all these other videos, for people who get on their high horse about the melanin and popping stuff, and even in the black conscious community, you have big, so-called big conscious community speakers attacking other people because of their lack of skin melanin. You're not even really going into the interpretations of the vibrations of neural melanin or the non-physical melanin as a whole. And the fact that it doesn't even matter if you yourself you can be the darkest person in the universe, but if you're dumb as shit and locked into an egoic version of reality, you haven't activated your, your potential. And that's why I go into understanding the vibrations as a whole and why I have difficulty with, now I, with the whole melanin popping stuff. Now, the thing is, I understand that it is a transition. It is needed. It's a thing to go from one extreme to another extreme. The thing is, you can't get lost in those extremes because you, as the experiencer, need to hold yourself accountable for yourself. You can't just jump. I understand that we've been separated from all of the, like, we've been pretty much stuck in a hole for our entire experience. We were enslaved, feeding babies to alligators so people can, so slave owners can catch alligators and sell alligator skins, literally alligator bait, enslaved, lynched, burned, destroyed. I understand that acting with the essence of melon very needed stepping stone. Point is you cannot wait a minute, live wait a minute, on that wait a minute. stepping stone. Wait a minute, you started breaking up. You said you understand that connecting with melanin. Yeah, I understand. I understand that connecting with melanin is a very definite need mm -hmm. and a stepping stone towards expanding your consciousness and expand and understanding the essence, the beauty of who and what you are. My point is that you cannot live on that stepping stone because you're just creating another limitation, another label that will create another illusion for your reality that you won't expand upon. You, you'll just create the illusion of expansion. So that's why I said, if you just call yourself just because, you, like I said, you can be the most mel skin melanated person on the, on the earth. You, but if, you're, if you haven't internally expanded your relationship to the mind, the, the soul, the mind, and the body, the consciousness and nature as a whole, then you, as the experienced Earth, haven't activated the potential and the vibrations, the actual, you're sitting in potential energy and you're not turning it into kinetic energy. That's my point. And that's what expanding your consciousness does when you constantly challenge yourself to expand this reality. So. In reference to the blood and the melanin, you can have O negative blood and still be a piece of shit, all the melanin in the world and still be whatever. It's up to you as the experienced earth to not get locked into the illusions of the physical reality and see how it mer how it matches with the non-physical reality. So yes, in reference to the blood. It's up to, it's not only up to the experience itself, it's up to the experiencer activating that experience. So we can learn from our mistakes and the mistakes of, of oppressors by realizing that the control grid is based upon keeping people limited by finite versions of reality and not connecting that to the infinite or the infinite versions of interpreting that reality. The balances between the masculine and the feminine, the light and the dark and so on and so forth. So Ellen does have a scientific interpretation of this reality. It, had, it does have a meaning and a purpose. But the blood, the blood itself does have a meaning and a purpose. Beyond that, and encompass in all of that as the experiencer don't activate that potential then it's all for not it doesn't matter now you it's know up. something i look at the whole melanin activation thing as the same thing as opening the pineal gland 
a lot of people who say you need to activate your melanin, they'll tell you when you ask them uh, what they mean, what I need to do to activate my melanin. Basically, they'll tell you normal stuff like critical thinking, thinking outside of the box, having more compassion, studying more, normal stuff, you know, and they call that activating melanin. Then they'll go on to say, well, you know, it's opening the third eye. Then you say, well, how you do that? And then it, it leads back to, again, normal stuff, being loving, researching, critical thinking. So you know what I come to a conclusion of? That we've kind of mystified normal things because us as the human being are the magical technology. We are the vessel. We are the sacred instrument that, you know, we can do so much if we only knew. And when we talk about, well, we got to activate this or decalcify that or do, do this, I think really what we're trying to say is when you think about it, critical thinking, thinking outside of the box. Now, think of why this is so important, because what do we say before we start saying things like activate your pineal gland and activate your melanin? Most of us, one of the most general things we say is, hey, guys, we only use 10 percent of our brain. Most of us heard that before because that's one of the first things that they taught us that, hey, you guys, you only use 10 percent of your brain. The other 90 percent you haven't accessed yet. You know what? I believe that's a lie. There's no way to prove that. Yeah. You know what I'm going to tell you? It falls in line of activating your pineal gland or activating this or activating that. I believe everything is activated. And all we yes. have to do is simply critical think and use logic. Because check this out. If they say we only use 10% of our brain, how do you access the other side if the brain is a muscle? You exercise it by what? Critical thinking researching science which is a verb think about it exercise is a verb you have to lift a weight and pick it up and make your biceps stronger but your brain is inside of your skull so you can't pick up a weight on your brain and lift your brain to be stronger so to access this other magical part that's supposed to be gone and missing is to simply use critical thinking the number one problem that the world suffers from today is not critical thinking, not using logic. You know, we got so many deep people and they're so metaphysical and they got so many big words and they're so eloquent with the speech. And these people still believe in the globe. These people still believe in fairy tales. These people still... Um, or tell you that you're somehow cursed with no way to prove it or to say that you only use 10% of your brain based on a lot that the same people who gave us the globe told us. They told us we was mm -hmm. monkeys. They say that the monkey only used 10% of his brain. So, hey, you, you only use 10% of your brain. Why? Because those who are in, in power over you, they don't teach their children to believe. They teach them that science is a verb and science is that exercise. It's that verb that works out the brain muscle. And therefore, you're not limited to a weak mind or closed mind that's stuck in a box because the, the exercise or the verb called science works out the brain. Get, get it in shape. Only thing that will stop that is belief. Belief is like the brain. Mm -hmm. Belief is the equivalent of the brain leaning up against the wall having a cigarette discussing the reality instead of getting up off the wall proving it that's what belief is so when we talk about that 90 percent of our brain we can't access we don't have to mystify it you can access a hundred percent of your brain by simply using it all critical thinking yeah and that's my theory and and it's a process, like, I, and to add on top of that, like I was saying, <clears throat> I mean, to add on to what you were saying, the boxing in of what melanin activation is and what um, the commercialization of activating your pineal gland, it's the same thing as like the new age and that, that whole mentality. It's, it's, a, it's a structured 
box. It's mm -hmm. a thing to keep you like there's an image where it shows like uh, somebody sitting on, on top of a, a camel or something and they got a stick and a string and a carrot on something and dangling in front. It just keeps you going and you're not really going anywhere. Mm -hmm. you're, you're just tail right. pretty much because you're believing in an illusion. So these these limitations get activated with the illusion of something like infinity or activation. When I explain uh, something like, use the word, because we're limited by the language. When I use something like the word activation, I'm speaking in reference to the, uh, the energetic, the vibration of who and what you are as the soul experiencing the reality so it's not an activation of the pineal gland that you're going to be able to do this one thing <laughs> this auras and all that other shit they, they, they tell you that they write all these books because they can make a money off of that but what's happening actually when you engage in a conversation with somebody when you when you watch a YouTube video, when you have a thought that's of a higher vibration, you are shifting your consciousness overall. It's everything that's changing. It's it's the energy of your experience and the experience er is shifting in every single moment through every thing that's happening. That's what I'm talking about in reference to activation of your melon your potential pretty much or your blood potential or your experiential potential it's to the 360 degree perspective of the soul essence of who and what you are so so like the origins of intuition the origins of being in the zone like where does that stuff come from the knowingness where does that stuff come from when you get out of the density realm and you start to get into more of your reality from a higher vibration, a higher perspective, that's what I'm talking about in reference to what activating is that gets compartmentalized into this uh, boxed in version, new age. People talk about news, they sell it to you. They want to say, oh, come down here and get your pineal gland activated for half off, yeah. you know. Two hundred ninety nine ninety five. Come in on Thursday and Friday yeah. after seven p.m. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah. that has. But people make money off of that. They make millions, that. and that's yeah. That's a whole. That's a corporate. That's a commercializing of the the natural experience. And we have a potential as a soul. We have a vibration as a soul, as a natural experience that is being commercialized every day by people like Oprah and Super Soul Sunday and all the people that she's got on her bullpen and all the new age community, the channelers and the United Nation having channelers and ancient aliens talking about ancient astronaut theorists profess. And you have all these, you know, taking away from the roots of your ancestors, taking away from the actual activation, the organic activation of your entire experience, not the commercial experience that they're telling you it is. Mm -hmm. There's a difference there. I was just going to add on to the earthquake, the earthquake thing that you were talking about, because I had been thinking about that recently in reference to the primary waters. And I didn't know if, if, you, if you've gone into the primary waters thing at all. Have you gone into that yet? Yeah, I have a video, Waters Above, Waters Below, the primordial See, that, waters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what that's what I was thinking in reference to. Um, uh, I hear what you're saying about the wars and everything like that in reference to earthquakes. Um, at the same time, the, the earthquakes itself feel more natural to me, like it's more of a natural occurrence to this this realm. And in reference to that, I was just thinking in reference to like maybe um, uh, different temperatures of water in the primary waters underneath, like as we can see, like the dome. Some people say the dome is actually made out of water and you have water underneath the us. Uh, so we have water being like the lubrication between, between realms. That's how I'm seeing like the, the, the living force between realms. So the water beneath this realm shakes up 
every now and again based upon the relationship between this realm and the realms all over the place and it's manifested into our experience as something like an earthquake it could be interpreted as um, differences in air pockets in the water underneath there that are so big that they create an earthquake or even temperatures that's just how i was thinking about what earthquakes are that also makes a lot of sense too so look I got up a slide now of the different wavelengths. I got up the black hole regions and I got up the solid liquid gas. And if you wanted to build on them as we close this out in relation to that black hole regions. In relation to the, the movements of land or the, uh, the, the bodies of land themselves and, and the black hole and the waters that come out of the the Arctic and all this other stuff. I, I haven't really pieced it together yet. But just as much as our body grows and we expand and contract, that's how I was relating um, this this realm as like the density. Is, I don't think we talked about that. I think I did the black hole experience, the mm -hmm. black hole after we had our last talk. <clears throat> But that in relation to density overall, and this being a density realm, mm -hmm. using the alchemy that is used against us, the heliocentric alchemy of the black hole, the black hole is basically a hole of infinite gravity that sucks everything into it and even light. So if we see the soul as light and vibration, then we can also see that this dense experience can be interpreted as a trap for the light body or the soul body. And the physical reality of the earth plane can also be seen as just like the platform for that trap. So we have like a larger earth body trap and then the body trap and so on and so forth. This is just how I was interpreting um, into what you know the black hole science is and relating that to what they're using like gravity as density. The definition of gravity that they use is actually how I'm seeing what is density. Mm -hmm. The actual, de actual de the definition of light speed and the, the, the light that that's their definition for the soul. And then the definition for time was actually the fluidity of the mind, the higher mind. So in reference to the, the gas, the alchemy of the heliocentric deception is actually selling back to us what is naturally part of our experience. As above, so below. The physical reality has a solid liquid in the gas, the, the mind, the gra or the gravity, the, the time, and the mind. The time is the mind, the body as the physical reality, and the soul as the light, the light speed. So having all of this sold back to us reversed and upside down is another way to lock us into an illusion of reality. And if that exists, on a soul and like the, the human experience and it and then just you know expanding upon the theory it must exist in reference to the soul or the uh, the earth body itself that's when i was real looking at the the arctic portal black hole being the center of this earth plane experience the waters of this earth plane actually being the literal waters and the physical body so the soul is the portal the body are the lands and the water is actually the mind so we have all of these relationships being sold back to us in a backwards side down version called the heliocentric model mm -hmm. and the actual coding for the solid, the liquid, and the gas, or the body, the mind, the higher mind, and the, the blood in the physical body, and the light body, be relative to the potential that we exist as. When you say potential, we're saying potent. 
something that's potent. And when we talk about uh, the solid liquid and the gas in relation to the human, it's interesting what you're saying because we're talking about even when we're born, we start off as just, to me, the gaseous realm would be the thought realm, the mind realm, where, where nothing exists yet. Like all things start from a thought that you can't touch, you can't see it. It's hard for me to explain a new invention to you until I invent it or draw it out of my brain. So that realm to me would be the gas realm. It's, it's kind of mysterious, like a cloud is an abstract shape. You can't say it's a circle. You can't say it's a square. A cloud is it's a gaseous object that's able to ascend and sustain its ascension and float and remain even with the earth plane. And not only that, but the shape it assumes is like a human fingerprint. Each one is its own unique one. I say that just to say that gaseous realm, anything can come from it. And uh, from that, when you think about a human, if you think of your mom and dad, the concept of a cupid, where your mom and dad laid eyes on each other, you were you started off as an idea. And from that idea, that love, that bond, came mm. you. And the first thing you were, well, you was just liquid. You were liquid before anything material forms. The baby is simply a plasma fluid inside of uh, his father's scrotum. We call semen or sperm cell, which is nothing but the embodiment of water it's a dense form of water you're living water at this stage you're a mermaid or a nagini with the fish tail and this was a form of deification in a lot of ancient cultures but you basically as a sperm cell you are the nagini phase you are that mermaid phase you're that water phase. You started off as an idea which is gaseous. Your thoughts are actually made out of physical material. I do believe scientists with this one based on my own life. I don't know if you have a significant other. Sometimes you can have a thought before you can get the words out of your mouth. She said it. It's because these mm -hmm. thought, these thoughts, if we can see them, they made out of particles. And when you have a, 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 a new idea or a thought, it's a bunch of energy being emitted around your head. You can't see it, but it's there. And it's, it's made out of physical material. It ain't then separate from us. It's another realm we can't see. But to make a long story short, you existed in that thought realm. And from that thought realm, the whole Cupid concept of you being the apple in your father's eye, you, you did the, uh, what they call magnetic attraction, law of attraction, to manifest yourself. Think about it. The word man is dealing with you becoming embodied. Fest is dealing with festering, becoming in the fetal, becoming something that's uh, infested. You're talking a germ. You become a germ, a semen, a sperm. But you go from the gas to the liquid in your father's scrotum, and the egg of your mother is full of liquid. This is all liquid phase. And from that phase, you develop the bones, the body, you become solid, physical. And upon death, you repeat the same steps in reverse. So you right now you solid, you go in the ground, you go back to the liquid phase. When you get put in the earth, you do liquefy. And from that phase, you ascend back to the source when you become a gas. So that drives that solid liquid gas concept home. And as we close it out, my brother, I wanted to deal with a lot of your pictures on the next slide or sometime in the future, because the diagram they given us for this black hole is very interesting. Um, I talk about the mother goddess and the cosmology being a hornet or a kananga, and we can call that the horned net, the earth plane being that plane and at the North Pole, the energy bursting out like a net or the top of a pineapple. But when I look at your black hole regions chart, I see that same concept where there's energy coming from this singularity and it's bursting out. 
and uh, it's making a kananga. And not only that, it looks like a trumpet. It looks like a horn. So when we talk about a hornet being a bee, and we talk about the bee goddess, mother goddess, and the kananga being a hornet dealing with cosmology, you look at the black hole chart, you can see that the hornet is also the horn. When you're dealing with the black hole, when you're looking at the cosmos from this particular view, all of the diagrams they give us is dealing with cosmological viewpoints that they're corrupting to hide the truth and giving you mumbo jumbo about black holes, which is really the binary code zero and one. From the singularity, mm -hmm. which is the zero, you get this extended uh, cone type thing rising up like a, a steeple, which is your one. So when you look at the zero, you're really looking at, you know, the universe from a top view as well. That would be the creator's view, the artist's view. You're looking down at the sun like the Madonna and child. It would be the mother looking down at the cosmos she created like an artist looking down at the canvas that it painted the picture on. So when you look at the Madonna and child with the mother looking at the, the, the child, You looking at the creator's viewpoint of the cosmos, you can represent that as a simple zero because that would be the mother's viewpoint. If a mother was looking down at the head of her son, which is the line, the masculine line, the one from a top view would be a dot or a point of singularity, a zero. And that would be the creator's view. So the mm -hmm. mother become so the child becomes the mother again from this viewpoint. And it's the yin yang, it's a continuum, just like the student and the teacher. The student is the student because it studies, but the teacher is the student as well because when the student studies, it teaches everything it, it learns. So it never stops studying, so it never stops being a student, and it never stops teaching because it's always learning. So the student is the teacher, the yin and the yang. And that's mm -hmm. totally different than the follower and the leader. That's based on beliefs. But the student and the teacher is based on science and facts. But just to wrap this all up, we're going to get into this binary code zero and one as it relates to NASA deception with the black hole, the singularity, the divine mother, and that infinite womb that we all got to go to every night when we close our eyes and go to sleep. And even upon what you call death, but is really just another life. There's no such thing as ending, only new beginnings and new beginnings and new beginnings. So with that being said, we're going to wrap this session up and I'm going to let my brother Subtle Infinity close it out. Uh, well, I just want to thank, thank you uh, for creating that space and uh, holding, holding the space for, um, you know, talking about what we're talking about. I think we really we were really went in deep on uh, a lot of the covers a lot of the topics that I had written down to talk about and um, just to close it out in reference to uh, what we might be talking about in the next session uh, but to, to boil it down how I'm seeing it is that largely we're being separated the overall theme of it all is that we, we allow ourselves to be separated from observing our reality and activating our ability to observe our reality from an internal space to project a more vibrant external space. Individually, this happens um, on every, in relationships, in individuals, in entire cultures, groups of people, and it happens in the entire human experience as a whole. Mm -hmm. And as long as we are continually separated from the balances of, or the understandings, understandings and overstandings of the soul, the mind and the body relationship, or the solid, the liquid and the gaseous reality or whatever you want to call it, it just, 
it just adds to a further separation. It's an expansion or contraction. We have an ability to expand or contract. We are in every moment we are expanding and contracting when you realize the heartbeat and your breath system and overall the experience itself can be dumbed down by um, a, a contracting uh, an imploding on itself experience just away from growing ultimately growing and expanding and by questioning your reality and questioning <clears throat> yourself everything especially your belief systems that's what adds to the expansion of everything that who and what you actually are not who and what you think you are mm -hmm. so that's that's pretty much how, how i wanted to say in reference to all of this stuff that we were talking about well i just want to thank everybody for joining in with us and we're not done we're going to continue we're going to wrap it up in the final portion that'll be a part three where we'll just go over some more interesting cosmological and spiritual concepts as they relate to the human. So peace and much love.